Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church for this, the third Sunday in Lent. Just a few announcements before we begin. Um, the middle school youth group is now open to fourth graders. They meet on the first and third Sundays of the month. So if you are interested in that, please take a look in your bulletin. There's information about the school fundraiser and school registration as well. Also, a call process update. The elders and the call committee have begun reviewing uh, a new list of pastoral candidates. They have also begun interviewing candidates at this point. So there is progress being made on the call front. And with that, uh, we have Principal Duckett here for uh, announcements too. Good morning. Um, thank you for just a brief moment of your time. I just want to point out on the back of your bulletin, um, next year we're kind of planning, we're starting to plan ahead for our next school year. Um, God continues to bless us here at St. John's. We have had uh, 355 kids register for next year. Um, looking at that, we'll probably be closer to 360, somewhere in there. Currently we have 315 kids um, this year, so continue to have amazing growth and, and just a blessing to, to be here. But just wanted to point out these um, positions that we have just to explain to you as a congregation where kind of we are. So the full-time position that we'll need, we'll need an additional fourth grade teacher to join Mrs. Harris on our fourth grade teaching team. Um, we did interview a candidate from Concordia, Nebraska. She did a, a, she had a, we had a very nice interview with her. She is actually coming to visit next uh, Monday the 15th. So um, she's kind of our, our goal as a Lutheran teacher, but we also have to be prepared for, um, just like the pastoral search, she's got other suitors as well. So she'll get to kind of choose where she wants to go. So we have to be prepared. So if you know of elementary teachers that would be a good fit here, we would love to have, uh, have them uh, apply. Um, also part-time positions, two elementary paraprofessionals. So people that help out in the classroom um, that can move around and, and be available to help kids uh, that are struggling, help kids uh, get from place to place, all kinds of great things there. We do need a part-time um, school receptionist, Miss Margie Swartz, our um, current receptionist, retired uh, just two weeks ago. So we're just kind of making things work until the fall, but uh, we'll be looking for that position as well. Uh, a reading interventionist, that's a kind of a lofty goal of ours to meet kids that are struggling, uh, meet those that are maybe a little bit behind on their reading. Um, and then also a Spanish teacher, part-time Spanish teacher. So if anyone is bilingual, has a, has a passion, or knows somebody that's interested in that, we would love to hear from you. But uh, again, want to keep things open and communicate with you on where, where we're going in the future here at St. John's. And it is a, a blessing to have a congregation that supports us, um, a congregation that supports financially, prayer and prayer and all those things. So I thank you for your time. Um, if you ever have questions or you ever want to check things out, please don't hesitate to get with me. Call, call me, set up a time, and we can talk more in detail. So thank you for your time and look forward to a, a great worship this morning with you. So God's blessings. Thank you, Principal Duncan. With that, we begin our worship with hymn 427, In the Cross of Christ I Glory.
Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <coughs> Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our defense against all our enemies. 
through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end.
and spoke, and the people marveled. But some of them said, He cast out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, while others, to test him, kept seeing from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a divided household falls. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will this kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by the Elzebul, and if I cast out demons by the Elzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor, which he trusted, and divides his spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever is not gathered with me scatters. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest, and finding not, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. As he said these things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you, and the breast in which you nurse. But he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven.
Lord, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go today to this account of Jesus casting out a demon. So the demon goes out, and he had made this man mute. And as soon as the demon is gone, his power over this man is gone, the man is able to speak again. And some of the people marvel. But others said, he casts out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of demons. While others, to test him, kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a divided household falls. So some are marveled. They see this miracle. They see the power that he has. Others seek more from him than what he has done, and yet others would ascribe the work of Jesus Christ to that of demons. Well, Jesus makes it very clear. I've cast out a demon. Why would I cast out a demon if I was working on behalf of them? A house divided against itself falls. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand, says Jesus? For you say that I cast out demons by the Elzebub, and if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom your, do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. Jesus' detractors here, as we see in the other accounts of this, have come very close, indeed, have basically committed sin against the Holy Spirit. They have called the work of God, the power of God, the power of Satan. It's a terrifying place to find yourself in. To ascribe the good works of Christ, the work of God, as the work of demons. And yet, many would. Many today speak blasphemies against Jesus. Many today speak blasphemies against the church. It's interesting. He says, by whom do your sons cast these demons out? Therefore, they will be your judges. Referring to the children of these detractors, the ones who would be called to go out and minister, the ones who would believe in Jesus Christ and go out. I cast out demons by the Elzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? To say that I am working for the devil, says Jesus, means to say that all of my disciples are working for the devil. It is to blaspheme the church, it is to blaspheme God, it is the worst sin that can be committed is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. But Jesus makes it very clear. It is by the finger of God that I cast out demons. And so the kingdom of God has come upon you. It is a sign that the kingdom is here that demons flee. It is a sign that the kingdom is here that the power of God is working and delivering people from the devil. Delivering people from their sin. It cannot be the work of the devil, because the work of the church, the work of Christ, is opposed to the devil and everything he stands for. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Jesus continues, When a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me. And whoever does not gather with me scatters. There are only two choices. To be in league with Christ and strong. Or to be in league with the devil and scatter. The devil has the appearance of power at times. He tempts you with everything. With pleasure, with goods, with fame and fortune and all of these things. He tempts you with comfort and worldly peace and safety. He gives you the appearance of unity. You forge relationships based on things other than Christ. You, you, you form strong alliances based upon things that are not in accord with the Word of God, but give the appearance of worldly strength. And so people take to the street to march for causes. They meet in clandestine meetings and plot and scheme. The, they meet in lodges and other clubs. The appearance of strength, but united in Satan. You are either with Christ or against Him. Jesus continues, in a very difficult lesson, and many things going on in just a few verses. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, when they've been delivered from the devil, when they've been delivered from sin, 
It passes through waterless places, and finding none, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. Then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. As he said these things, a woman in the crowd raises her voice and says, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast in which you nursed. But he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Now this isn't a subtle insult to the Virgin Mary or anything like that. She certainly did keep the word of God. The scripture says she hid all these things in her heart. But the point is, is that the one is blessed who hears the word of God and keeps it. In contrast to the one who once delivered, now finds himself oppressed by demons, overcome with sin all the more. It's a dangerous place to find oneself. Now on this side of glory, no one is beyond repentance. And even after we fall into sin, God calls us back. But this is a warning. It's a warning to those who, having been cleansed, would take their hand off the plow and turn back to their old ways. When the unclean spirit goes out and passes through waterless places and says, I don't really like it here. I'm not finding what I need. So it goes back to the house that it had, sees that it's now swept clean and it's comfortable. And he brings seven more demons with him and the man finds himself in worse shape than he was before. The man is empty somehow. Clean, but in a worldly sense, but empty. He is not filled with what is needful. He is not filled by God and with God. It's like we read in Ephesians chapter 3. To know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. He says that according to the riches of glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Man will be filled with one of three things. Filled with demons, finding themselves oppressed, finding themselves utterly under the control of the devil. He will find his house swept clean and vacant, he will find himself empty. This is the person who has been cleansed, but is no longer seeking after the things of God. The Christian must seek after the third of That vacant space inside of you, your house as, as it is, must be filled with God the Holy Spirit. It must be filled with the fullness of God. And how do we do that? Well, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. You hear the word of God. And you believe it. You cling to it. And you hear the word of God. And you believe it. And you live according to it. And to live according to the word of God begins first and foremost with faith. And everything else flows from that. A true faith bears fruit. A true faith clings to the word of God. A true faith believes the word of God. And so everything is ordered around that. When we begin to remove ourselves from the word of God, then the demons come back in. We can read the accounts of all the demonic possessions throughout Scripture. And we see many interesting things happen. We see legions of demons cast out of the pigs, for example. And in nearly every description of demonic possession that we have in the Bible, the person is out of their mind, the person loses control of their faculties, and the person begins to harm themselves. And our temptation today is to say that demons or the devil are no longer active, despite the warnings in Scripture that the devil is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Horror movies and other things have softened our depiction of the devil to the point that we think it's fiction. You watch movies that deal with exorcisms and so on and so forth, and when you start to treat the devil like he's Frankenstein or the Wolfman, or Freddy Krueger or something like that. Perhaps a bit scary, but something not exactly real. But the devil is real. And demons are real. And it's not that we should fear them, but we should fear God all the more and resist the temptations of these spirits. 
The holy angels war on our behalf. Jesus Christ fights on our behalf. And the call of the Christian is a call into a kind of spiritual warfare. The devil is real, and the devil seeks to do you spiritual and physical harm. The devil seeks to order the world completely opposite of what God has intended. And so we wonder, well, where is the devil? We don't see really um, sometimes the signs of what we see in the New Testament. But do we really? Have you noticed how the thinking of the world has changed so radically just in a decade, really just in five years? It's borderline criminal now to affirm the biblical understanding of male and female. Now you can change that at will, according to some people. Is that not demonic? When the Bible says God made him male and female, and we say, no, God, you didn't. You can change it. Is that not evil? When marriage is completely inverted and distorted into something other than what God has said, is that not demonic? When we offer up our children on Molech's altar for the sake of comfort, when we sacrifice them for the sake of temporal security through abortion and through neglect, is that not demonic? You can call it what you want, but it is not hearing the word of God and keeping it. When we say that there are ways to heaven other than through Jesus Christ, is that not demonic? When we say it really doesn't matter, God doesn't care, God owes me something, which is really the way many of us treat God, is that not demonic? The temptation to deny the word and to not live according to it is not a sin of the youth, it's not a sin of children or a sin of the middle-aged, but it's the sin of everyone from youth all the way up to the elderly. We've deluded ourselves into thinking that the newest generation is worse than the old, but really for the last 60 years or so, it's kind of been on a bobsled straight down to hell. Because we began to say that God didn't really say this and God couldn't really mean this. God couldn't really have created the world this way. God could not have designed marriage this way. And so every sin is treated as a minor peccadillo. Every sin is treated as somehow not harmful to the soul. And so we find ourselves worse than we were before. We find our houses swept clean, and then soon we are taken over by a strong man who breaks in to steal, and he brings in many of his friends. The spiritual deception is not unique to the young, as many people like to believe. More and more, we're seeing it in the older generations, in the middle age of the elderly. It's a strange thing to see. This kind of generational temptation that, well, I'm older, therefore I'm immune from this. Very dangerous. For it is precisely the one who has been clean, but who finds themselves devoid of God, who finds themselves in the most danger. But blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. We do have a battle today. We do struggle against the devil. We do struggle against temptation. But what does Jesus say? The strong man. Well, we can look at the devil as a strong man, and indeed he is strong in his own way. But we have the stronger man who is our advocate. We have Jesus Christ who again fights alongside of us. And where the man in this story today was bound by this demon, his jaw was locked, his tongue was not loose, Jesus Christ, the stronger man, with the finger of God, with the power of Almighty God, comes and unbinds him. Jesus is stronger, and so too you, who may well be bound by the devil today, and may be bound by sin today, have an advocate with the Father, he is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who has the power of God with him, who is very God and very God, he is the strong man who can loose and unbind you, and indeed he does. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it, so hear the word of God today. Jesus Christ has died for you, Jesus Christ lives for you, and by faith he fights for you. He overtakes the strong man, for he is stronger. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Don't merely hear, but...
but believe. Believe and live. Come to Christ, receive his gifts. How do we find ourselves full with God? We feast on his food. We feast on his word. We literally feast upon his body and his blood. These are the things that fill us. These are the things that make us strong to withstand temptation. And these are the things, hearing the word and living in accordance with it and receiving that word, that back and forth is what makes us strong and is what makes us full. Do not forget the word of God, but always hear it. When the world says that God cannot possibly have meant something, that God didn't really mean this is a sin, or that God doesn't really care. Ignore those people. And don't simply ignore them, but as opportunity provides, rebuke them and turn away from them. Flee them if you have to, for it is a danger to your soul. For it's not simply denying creation, which is bad. It's not simply denying that miracles happen. Soon, if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves denying the person and work of Christ. And there we find ourselves empty and void and at the risk of demonic attack. Jesus Christ is the stronger man. Jesus Christ is here today. Jesus Christ and his word are present in this church. Jesus Christ and his word are present in your homes. You are baptized Christians. You have the word of God with you. Do not fear the strong man. Do not fear the demons that can come in with seven of his friends and make you worse than you were before. But fear God. Love God. Trust in God. Be filled with God. And you have no risk of robbers and bandits and demons breaking in. Jesus Christ has bound the devil. Now the devil kicks and screams against him. The devil does what he can in the short time that he has, but he is defeated. Jesus' victory is your victory. Do not throw your victory away, but be filled with God and win your crown. In Jesus' name, amen.
and graciously cause his word to flourish. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who are sick, anxious, lonely, or oppressed in any way, especially Jim, Pat, Wanda, Corinne, Bob, Herman, Joyce, and Kim, that God, who is the strength of the weak, would overcome the devil's demonic attempts to lead them into despair, granting his healing, cleansing power to rest upon their bodies and minds. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who are that the Lord who joins his word to the bread of life, inviting us to eat and drink, would grant us to hear and keep his word in faith, and so worthily receive the true body and blood of our Savior in our mouths, and be given his eternal blessing. Let us praise the Lord. Lord All these and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him, who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, and we're all praising thee and saying. Peace of the Lord be with you 